You sold your firstborn child to a witch years ago to save your mother from a deadly disease. Since then, you've been less than successful in the dating world. If you don't find a mate soon, the witch will never get her part of the bargain. It shouldn't surprise you when she shows up at your door one day with a stern expression. My dear, we must talk about your deal. Though she looks no older you th than you, the very air around her tingles with power. You can't argue. You get her situated at your kitchen table with a cup of tea before you try to explain. I've tried, but I, I really have, but I'm just bad at this. I'm not cruel, she cuts in with a little be be bemused little laugh. I won't force you to procreate with someone you don't want to be with. I'm merely help here to help you towards with happiness, and it seems you could use the help. Blind dates arranged by a witch. How did your life come to this? Well, you say hesitantly, I guess it couldn't hurt. The witch's pleased smile reminds you of the curl of a cat's tail before it pounces. So, she starts with a clap of ha her hands. Let's find you a man. Um... Uh... Okay. So... This game is called A Witch's Word, and... I'm playing it because the next installment in the in the racist furry lesbian games is too long for me to play in one night, and I'm really tired. So I found this game, and it seems interesting, and I've never played it before, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, yeah, okay. A man, a, a pale man with dark hair and a soft smile waits for you at the count table at the corner. After brief introductions, he wastes no time jumping in, leaning back in his chair with a smirk. Just to warn you, I don't read menus. I take the letter liberty of um of ordering for both of us already. Um, okay. They didn't have my preferred cut of boar, which I honestly can't believe, but I came up with something that should be decent. I've spent a little time traveling, so I guess I could, you could say I'm a little uh, bit of a food snob. What's a smirk? Like a schoolboy aiming to impress. Okay. Um, I actually do like cooking. He jumps in immediately. You should really try my rabbit stew. My chef friends have it even better than his. The trick is, a waiting approaches the table is interrupts colorful seafood down and asks you wine preference. Well, come on, sweetie. You can't make all the decisions for us. You tell the witch is your wine preference, rich and dangerously strong, and then turn to your food. It's a colorful assortment of seafood that looks appetizing but unidentifiable. Can I at least know what's in this? He laughs. Just try it. I guarantee you'll like it. I've spent time, some time on the western coast and I got a real taste for seafood. Okay. You were you not know, nod, glancing away, calculating just how early you can leave this date without feeling terribly rude. Look at me, he insists with a laugh. Don't look there. Look at me. Okay. You look back towards him with an unimpressed file, shoveling a, a bite of your food in, in your mouth. The faster you eat, the faster you can leave. So, you ask, what do you do? Oh, I'm a writer. He leans back, satisfied to have your attention. It's a difficult job. It involves a lot of intro introspection and inner work, and, you know, really getting to the truth of things. Oh, boy. Um. Oh, dear. Um. Oh. I well, doubt my work is anything like you're, you're likely to read. Wow. Um, I'm into deep, universal stories about identi identity and feelings of alienate. Gee, I never felt alienated. Er, right, like what? Well, about a scholar who's sitting middle age and feeling unsure about his direction in life. It was all felt a little different. Doesn't fit quite in with ordinary people, you know. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. To smother your grimace and your laughter. <laughs> um... Listening to um <laughs> uh, I'm so I don't understand what with oh goodness um you know you're frowning even as a voice in your head touched that it's a rule you used it to show the wish you tried so you care oh um yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm out of here. Uh, nicely done, dear. That's the last time I'll find you some. Okay. 
I guess the writer is out. Bladesmith? You meet him in his workshop. He is broad shoulder and dark skinned with an intense gaze that meets yours directly, but his smile is warm his hand is gentle when he takes yours. Like exactly like she described you, he says with a laugh. Um uh pleasure to meet you. Sorry we had a meet at the workshop. I don't get much much of a chance to step away these days with business what it is. Not that I was much of a socializer before. Um, he adds with a slightly embarrassed expression. I'm not much of a people person myself. I mean, I have a witch setting me up on dates. You get a laugh, warm and rumbling, out of him at that. True enough. Maybe we're a match set. Would you like to sit outside and have a bite to eat? I brought a little something. A picnic, so I'm perfect. You talk. He's serious about his work, serious about life, serious about starting a family. But he smiles easily when you tell tales about your mother and her obsession with feeding the local imps and laughs freely when you make a particularly good joke about old mages and pantaloons, so this old mage walks into a brothel. <laughs> when it's time to leave, he gives you a hand up and a family experience, and you f think vaguely about kissing him. Uh, so... I visit the workshop often. Um, uh, spend hours watching him work, trading stories from your pasts, and idly discussing the future. Calmly emptily discussing the future. You manage to coax him out of his workshop and over to your house. Your mother is helplessly charmed. And then comes the conversation you have been dreading. Um, I have something I need to tell you. He puts down his t tools carefully, giving you his full attention. You tell him of the witch, of your bargain, of its price, of your debt. His face is stony, stormy. Children are not currency. I had little choice, a life for life. It, it, if it could have been mine, I would have paid that price. He is still frowning. Um, I want to have children, a family, with you. Um, man. He is disgusted but accepting when you he asks you to leave. The witch comes to you, face inscrutable, asks you to try again. You can't shake the feeling this would have gone differently. Maybe better? Let's go for, go for the bookbinder. You ra round the corner, find a square town, a, the town square packed full of waves and wa people and wares. Market days are always a fun, hectic, loud time to visit. You find the fountain where you have agreed to meet easily. It is a long, long stretch of sunbaked cacophony before cacophony before a man approaches you. I thought you'd change your mind. You quip gen <sighs> gently. He's a willow, willowy man with hair like a daisy, sunny day, and a shy face. Oh, no way. It's just been a while since I did this. You haven't been going out? Not since my wife died. Oh, shoot. Um, uh, foot and mouth already. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's been a few years, and the de it hurt heals a little every day. He offers you his arm. You walk together around the market stalls, exchanging instructions. After a while, you say, so what do you think so far of, our whole, of the whole getting out thing? So far, it's alright. I like it. I'm just a little surprised. What? Why? What did you expect? No, it, it's not you. I'm just surprised at how nervous I am. Uh, don't be. I don't do this very often either. Really? At least we know we have that much. Well, now at least we know that much about it. Which must have some good reason to think this would work. It piques your interest. I guess you've known her a while, huh? He shakes his head. I don't know her at all. He, she helped my village with a pixie problem we had when I was a kid. How old was, how old was the witch then? How old is she now? How to answer that? Your silence makes him stop walking, and he turns to you with an em embarrassed jet flapping of hands. Oh god, that's a pretty personal question, isn't it? I'm sorry. Um... Uh, I made a deal with her. I'm still paying off the debt. The silence is awkward. Stretched and burning. <laughs> but he just smiles and nods, to, nods down the street. Could I interest you in some lunch at my favorite cafe? Yes, it's a great day for a little walk so, and some lunch. The meal has been been served among comfortable t small talk. And it leads for, I'm not, I know I'm the most interesting person, he admits with endearing blush, but I try to be a good one. There are worse, much worse ways of living. So tell me about myself. So, you smile. So tell me about yourself. The conversation flows for hours, sharing details of lives and their lives and interests. 
If it is not earth-shattering, it is easy and comfortable, and you both leave with smiles. The date is followed by another, and another, and another. Um, each as sweet and simple as the last. Hours spent in warm company. Eventually, he asks you to marry him. Uh, I was going for a sp specific path here. I think I, I, I would feel bad, though. I Okay. Months pass in happiness and the pleasant work of building a home. But as months turn into a year, it seems that despite your efforts, a baby is not forthcoming. Air to the day after your wedding, a knock sounds on your door. It is the witch, swathed in soft grays, a small basket in her hands, that same knowing smile on her face. I've come to check on your progress, and if you're willing, get it, give you a little help. She offers you the basket full of gently clicking bottles filled with pearly liquid, some potions of fertility to give you a little boost. I've got some tips on how to ensure you conceive if you'd like to be sure you're doing it right. Um, uh, I will gladly take the potions and um, I guess some tips will help. The witch spends the next five minutes speeding th efficiently through a list of tips to ensure um, pregnancy from getting enough sleep to rubbing moonstone on your belly to wearing a sachet of eagle dung and rose water around your waist. Your ears are burning by the time she's finished. Before you can get on another word, the witch nods in satisfaction and disappears in a cloud of sweet scented, vaguely sweet scented, scented smoke. The next year, she doesn't, still doesn't bring a child, but does bring the witch back to the same, on the same day. She is bearing a different basket of potions at potions this time a gl gently glowing purple, and after you agree to try, try them, you ma manage to convince her to stay for dinner. She's pleasant and thrilling company. Stories of s stories of speaking of street tree spirits wedged between pearls of wisdom and attentive listening, and the night is over too quickly. The next year there is no baby, but there is the witch who stays for hours and regales you with tales of traveling and adventures in the Kelpie husbandry. She has more stories than seems possible for someone of her age, more than would fit in a lifetime. The year after, there is no baby, but there is the witch, who brings a special goblin brewed wine that has the three of you seeing colors and laughing into the night. She leaves with you with a nasty smelling elixirs for the next morning, and a split second hug, the scent of rich earth hanging long after she f left. When five years have passed, there is no baby, but there is the witch. You greet her with a delighted smile. Um. Um. And she greets you by taking your hands between hers and saying, It's over, dear. What? What's over? Um, and the witch shakes her head, but her smile is fond. I'm sorry, my dear, but I'm afraid children are not in you and your husband des husband's destiny. Um, but how will I repay you? She pats your hand fondly. You make a good effort to repay what you owe. Now it is my choice to forgive that debt. Go and be happy. Thank you, but, um, you could still visit. I mean, I'm sure you have important magic stuff to do, you stutter, but, well, you're always welcome here. A slow smile. I'll have to take you up on that. A witch's word is good. I did that. You can't shake the feeling that this could have all, this all, all could have gone differently. Maybe better? Wait, this all seems familiar. You look up at the witch. You look up your friend. Have we done this before? She smiles slowly. Ah, so you're starting to remember. You huff in frustration, but you find yourself returning her, her smile. Are these my only options? Is this the way it has to be? Her eyes spark, and she leans forward keen keenly. Perhaps there are other options. Perhaps there are things you're only now beginning to see. You feel a shift. Undiscovered other futures forming at the edges of your mind. What do you want? You think you know, but you aren't unsure if it's possible. With a deep breath, you look to the witch in the eyes, and you offer her, her your hand. This is what I was going for! She looks startled, for the first time you can remember, but her smile says she'd be hoping for this. She takes your hand. You have to ask, but what about my debt? She smiles and uses your clasped hand to pull your gently closer. I want a student who would eventually become a partner, an equal, somebody sh to show all the hidden secrets of this world, someone to set free. In her eyes you see f 
fire, hidden places in old ways, dark feathers and branching horns, endings and beginnings. You cannot look away. Now I can have that, she continues, if you want it. You feel yourself shiver. I want it. She leans in further to promise, to remember the promise against your skin. You will be more than alive. You will be powerful. The promise is thrilling, but one thing matters most, and we'll do it together. She looks at you like you're a revelation. Leans in to brush your lips to hers, to yours, together. Oh, which is word is good. End. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. That's that. That happened. That was all. That was. That's just it. I guess. I I guess that's that's it. Yeah. And so that's a witch's word. Uh, this has been Tori Zubek. This has been um, a witch's word. Uh, this was fun. I, I mean, I don't really have a lot of graphics or gameplay per se. I'm just clicking on things. But it was pretty cool. And so, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week with Pokemon Crystal. And the week after that with uh, the next um, New Reese's Fairly Lesbian game. Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.